There was an interview in 16 Magazine, I think it was the spring of 67, and somehow, accidentally, they published our home address as the mailing address for the fan mail. Within days, the mailman stopped coming. It was a truck that arrived with sacks of mail. And we were answering it. It came into our dining room. We had our dining room table all set up with the mail that we opened and we stuffed envelopes with this early Spock promo picture. It was one of our, fam our family activities, you know, was answering fan mail. Personal life was gone. Yeah, I mean, it, it started happening very fast. And uh, I'll show you how naive I was. At that time, I still had my phone listed in the phone book and my <laughs> address. And it was all, you know, I'd never dreamed that there was going to be any that kind of impact because I'd been on television before mm -hmm. and movies before. And I was listed in the phone book. It didn't matter to me. We started getting a lot of fan mail, not only fan mail, but fans coming to our door, knocking down the door. Uh, we started getting people driving by the house and parking and, and ripping at the shrubbery to have a souvenir, you know, and taking my grass and my leaves and whatever. Some of them would knock on the door and ask to be invited in to visit. <laughs> it, it, it got really crazy. Yeah, yeah, it got really crazy for a while. What about when you came back to Boston during the Star Trek years? Yeah, that was kind of exciting and a little difficult. Uh, uh, people were following me on the street, and I didn't really want to know people to know where I was living. I was staying with my folks, with your grandparents, right. and they, they didn't have any idea what Star Trek was. They didn't get it. All they knew was something had happened. Well, how did they react when they saw your haircut? My dad actually thought I was wearing a wig. He had a picture of me as Spock up on the wall in the barbershop, and kids would come in and say, I want a Spock haircut. 